Hi, it is Stacy, and we are here at Tamarack Nature Center, and we are here for our first edition of Nature Know-It-All. Today, we have a very special focus. It is all about natural resources and restoration. And our first contestant is Mr. Justin from New Richmond, Wisconsin. Hello, Justin. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks. So glad you're here. So Wisconsin, do you have a favorite cheese, by the way? Oh, absolutely. Aged cheddar. Ooh, very good choice. Very good choice. All right, so let's get down to business. We've got three questions. Once I read off the question, when you think you have an answer, hit the button. Hit the buzzer, and then we'll see how many you get right. I think I'm ready. Okay, excellent. Question number one. What are the top three reasons for an oak savanna restoration. Okay, um, Stacy, I think I got this one. Uh, number one, we wanna increase plant diversity. Uh, okay. Diversity is key. And then number two, we wanna reestablish endangered land types. A lot of people don't know that oak savannas are some of the most endangered ecotypes in the world. Uh, and then number three, we wanna improve spaces for people because it helps your mental health to get outside. Oh my goodness! All right. You got them all right! Incredible! Whoa. Incredible! All right! Wow! Oh my goodness! Let's see, we're one for three. All right, next. Are you ready, Justin? I'm ready again, I think. All Still right. a little nervous. Okay, well, you're, you're doing really well here. Name the top five invasive plants that are removed to prepare or prep a restoration area. Okay, uh, Stacy, uh, this one's a little more tougher. Um, I think I have three off the top of my head. We've got the garlic mustard, black locust, which is a tree, and Siberian elm, which is another woody tree, uh, woody species. But uh, the, the other two could be tough. Let's say, um, well, there's buckthorn out there. Uh, we've definitely gotten rid of some of that. And then uh, one a lot of people don't know about, how about narrow leaf bittercress? How's oh my that? My goodness, do you think he got it? He rattled them right off. <gasps> Garlic mustard, black locust, Siberian elm, buckthorn, and narrow leaf bittercrust. He got it! Yes! Oh. <laughs> I thought I almost had it. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. He's already breezed through you. Two out of three. And for our last and final question for the day, name five native plants that are planted in an oak savanna restoration. All right, we've, uh, we've got wild bergamot, which is a, a great flower. Uh, June grass and little blue stem to round out our grasses. Uh, and then Indian grass and prairie drop seed. How about that? Oh my gosh, they sound great to me. Let's check. Wow! He wrapped them up. He got them up. And Justin. How did you do that? I don't, you might have to move on to the finals and the semifinals. How did you get all of those questions right? Well, uh, I've done a lot of this work myself and uh, happy to help out around the parks to, to make sure that these things happen and learn from other people. So wait a minute, are you saying you do this for your job? Yeah, yeah, they where actually do you, pay me May for I it. ask where you work? Ramsey County employs me to do this. Nice. Well, hey, we've got some pretty cool restoration going on in the prairie and out that's going to turn into an oak savanna. Would you mind walking over there and maybe answering a few questions for us? Yeah, I'd certainly love to join you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I will give you an air high five. High five. Nice job. And we'll see you out in the woodlands in a couple minutes. Sounds good. All right, thanks for tuning in for Nature Know It All. Hi, everybody. We are out in our restoration area, and Justin here from Soil and Water is going to help us try to figure out what's happening and why. So, Justin, what happened here? Well, first of all, Stacy, let me step back a little bit and talk about our plan. So, about a year ago, we did a redo of the park's plan, and that included a natural resource plan uh, revamping. And as identified in there, there's several places around the county that were identified as top priority areas. So we went, at, this was one of them, and we went ahead and got a grant through our Conservation Partners Legacy Grant 
uh, through the Department of Natural Resources. We came up with a plan specific for this area and um, worked with some contractors to then remove a lot of the invasive trees. So we had buckthorn in here, Siberian elm, um, a lot of black locust, which is extremely invasive, uh, meaning that it takes over and basically denutes the soil, nothing else can grow. So not a whole lot of diversity, which is what we're after. Um, then we came back and you can see some of the spraying here. Uh, we came back and we wanted to terminate as many plants as possible to make sure that we had a clean seed bed to start over with so that we didn't just have another weed bed in a couple years. Next steps are going to be uh, planting out in, the, out in the field areas and we're also going to do some plantings in here to try to supplement the good native plants that are growing up. Alright, sounds good. Can I ask what are some of the plants you're going to plant? A uh, little bit of everything that you would expect in a tall grass prairie. So uh, heavy on the grass is like June grass and Indian grass, uh, big blue stem, little blue stem. Also a good amount of flowers. Flowers are pretty expensive though in the mixes so we try to uh, balance that as much as we can with the budget that we have on hand. So wild bergamot will be in there, black-eyed Susans, you'll probably see some of those uh, types of plants start up first. And uh, as things goes on, go on, we can reassess what's in there and increase the diversity by planting later. Awesome. So you said that this was one of the top priorities to restore. Help me understand why is this such a high priority to restore this area or this type of area? Yeah, good question. This particular area was high priority because of all the restoration that's gone on before it. So out to our west here, this is in the northeast corner of the property, all out to the west has been restored for the most part in previous decades. And with this area not being restored, you're getting a lot of invasives heading back into that area. So in order to protect our investment, we needed to continue to work on the restoration to get rid of that seed bank, get rid of the plants that are reinvading areas that we've already cleaned up. Oh, sounds really good. So it sounds like a big process. How long is all of this going to take, do you think? Yeah, it's an ongoing process that will never end, but uh, we have a three-year grant with the Conservation Partners Legacy, the CPL. Uh, after that, it'll be maintenance. In about year three, because we got the planting in last year, about year three should really start to see that prairie pop. And some of the woodland flowers should start to come out a little bit more. Um, in year five, six, that's when you're really going to start to see uh, the prairie be established and, and self-maintain as, as much as we can without uh, hands-on. Okay, so I heard a lot about prairie. So this used to feel like and look like more of a dense woodlot. So it's going to look a lot more open. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I know it's visually disturbing to a, a <laughs> lot of people, and that's the, I, I respect that, and I, I understand that it can it can be tough when you come here for years, and that's what it looks like. The problem is, like I said, with all the invasives in there, it just denudes the soil and everything's gone except for a couple of the animals that can survive in here the most hardy. So what we want to do is, is our main goal is just increase diversity and diversity means resilience. It can, it can bounce back from whatever you throw at it. Um, so what we want to make sure that we do is Keep going back to that uh, that that diversity and and evaluating that at at all times. Nice. So we're not necessarily changing this back to what it actually originally was because we don't know, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And so, so that's a a good point. This area was a lot of tall grass prairie, some short grass prairie, depending on the area. There's also some shrubland in there, and then what we call uh, oak savanna, which was a it's a highly endangered ecotype. Um, that oak savanna is is what we're trying to go after here. So that just means that we have some uh, uh, oak trees that are fire resistant or can handle um, regular fire uh, planted within that, and what. That might not have necessarily been here, but looking back at the records that did exist in this area, and we want to make sure that 
where where appropriate, we can stick that oak savanna back and try to do our part to undo the man-made um, uh, disturbance that was done before. Nice. All right. And you said that uh, oak savannas and prairies are endangered ecosystems, ecotypes. How how few are there around? Yeah. The the both with tall grass prairie and oak savanna, the the statistic I'm most comfortable with is less than one percent of the original remnants are left over it's incredibly endangered yeah well speaking of prairie would you mind walking with me over to one of our uh, controlled burn areas and talk about that yeah let's talk about some maintenance all right perfect we'll see you in just a minute all right so we have moved to one of the sections of the land here at tamarack that was part of one of the controlled prairie burns this spring and you can see, look around, you can see not only is there a little bit of uh, evidence of charring from the fire, but there's also a lot of greenery. So a lot of people don't know why controlled prairie burns happen. Why do you burn in Ramsey County Parks? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, prescribed burns and controlled burns are a key part of maintenance of the prairie. So once we get established, we want to make sure that those non-natives or, uh, or woody natives don't reintroduce themselves into the prairie. So we do that by burning, and as you can see, it's pretty effective here that the, this little woody plant right here just crumbles right up, can't survive. Um, this, we do this um, just to make sure that those natives can get a, get a head start on uh, the non-native species, the herbaceous and the woodies. So, wait a minute, but how do these native plants survive a fire? Well, they're what we call fire adapted. So they have, they've co-evolved with fire so that they can, they need fire to survive. Um, non-native species, the herbaceous and, and the, the woody plants, they're not meant to be run through by fire, so it'll set them back while your natives will thrive once that black shows up on the ground, warms up the soil, and makes them pop out. They stay dormant. And then don't, isn't it right that a lot of these native prairie plants have really deep roots? Absolutely. That's a key part of it. They can be up to 10 feet. I don't know if you've seen that poster, but it, it, it can be up to 10 feet compared to some of your turf grasses that are just inches. Shallow. Okay, that makes sense. So how often do you do burns in the prairies? Yeah, ideally three to five years is, is, is usually the number. There's some research out there showing that maybe we should do it a little more often as we can, but you know, budgets and permits are hard to get a hold of sometimes. All right, are there other ways that you maintain prairies in other uh, areas? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, buffalo roam the prairies for years and still do in areas. Um, key piece and, and many ruminants can be a, a part of that so goats cattle uh, buffalo if you can get a hold of them they can uh, chew down and, and and knock down some of those woody species there's also mowing that's basically the mechanical version of what you get with the animals all right so all of this work and maintenance seems like it's definitely worth worth all the effort um, but why is it have to be why is it so much work yeah, this is really important. There's a lot of planning that goes into it, and there's a, a lot of uh, um, work and effort that goes into it, absolutely. But it's it's definitely the payoff. You get things like the bluebirds and uh, a lot of the, the flowers and the grasses that you wouldn't get otherwise. It was a lot of human disturbance to get to the to degrade the areas that we're restoring today, and it's going to be a lot of effort to get back to a functional uh, ecosystem in there. Well, we appreciate all of your and the rest of the Park District and Soil and Water and everybody, all the players that go into maintaining all the property here at Tamarack. Uh, it's a wonderful spot to be and I look forward to seeing it years down the road after more of the restoration has come to fruition. Yeah, we'll keep working at it. Thanks. Thanks.